Isabella Loretta Janke has been suspended from Texas Tech University for two years. Zoe, Bella's ex and second most prominent victim of Bella at TTU, confirmed this to me on the late hours of 5 November 2021. I can't overstate my respect for her and Roman's bravery throughout this ordeal. This knowledge is mostly supposed to be confidential, but Bella can't keep her mouth shut about the matter either, so it is what it is. Anyway, I know you're probably upset that it's only temporary. Believe me, I am too. Especially compared to the swift permanent ban Zorgoth received for a private joke on a personal discord. But the fact that it's two years does guarantee that many of Bella's victims can finish their TTU career free from the direct influence of a relentless bully. And this is also the kind of anomaly that stands out on a resume, so it's cause for celebration in my mind. Therefore, let me update you on everything since my previous video on Miss Janky worth your notice. First, the small amount of information I know about the committee hearings. Owing to COVID-19, both Bella and Lewis's hearings were conducted remotely via Zoom. Neither of them has been on campus since Texas Tech began getting inundated with reports about them on 6 August. Bella and Lewis cooked up a genius plan to defend themselves. Everything about them is a lie. Every text and Discord message by them was faked. Every photograph of them committing violence was doctored. Every timestamp selfie of them was doctored. And every piece of video evidence of sexual assault and other crimes were conjured frame by frame by someone with a grudge. In other words, it was a complete duplication of the tactic they used to get off scot-free last year when their sadism was first reported under Title IX. If you haven't guessed, TTU staff members and proper adults overseeing the committee were, by their own admission, technologically illiterate. So it might very well have worked again. But this time around, when TTU contacted Zoe and Roman, they were exceedingly unctuous. I have to imagine that knowing the chess club cult sadism slipped through their hands once before, as well as a publicity that Miss Internet God generated, cast a shadow even they couldn't ignore. I don't know precisely what charge TTU found compelling enough to finally dole out punishment to Bella this time around, but I have to imagine the preponderance of evidence forced their hands. So let me repeat my sentiments from the last video. To every single person who reached out to contribute in some form, thank you. Whether you were a friend of Bella's victims, a current TTU student, an afar animal lover, or a drama aficionado of Kiwi Farms, you know who you are. Now let's talk about Lewis's fate. I don't know this for certain, again owing to the committee's privacy, but I'm quite optimistic. Remember, he was the recipient of the most action in the original Title IX investigation, and Bella constantly throws him under the bus to save herself. Realistically, you have to imagine his punishment at least equals hers. As for the rest of the chess club, as far as I know, none of the other members who rode with Bella, be it Aldo, Jasmine Velez, Ryan Patrick Nagel, or Amangadali Alan Awabu, received any sort of action. Congratulations, I suppose, but don't worry, your actions and inactions will never be forgotten. Karma finds a way. And last but not least on the hearings, here's something to make you smile. Bella and Lewis both elected to have mics and videos disabled for the hearings. A stark contrast to the unflinching bullies they usually are, huh? Now let's move on to a matter you've probably been tracking, Bella's social media campaign. First, did you know that Bella and Lewis never stopped using the same Discord accounts that have been logged to death? Yes, the same ones in which they posted timestamp selfies, animal torture, and suicide planning together. I can't even think of a clever joke to make, so I'm just going to include their static IDs so you can ban them from your communities in advance. On the YouTube front of Bella's social media war, she began a flagging spree, probably with the help of her otherwise useless lawyer, beginning right around the time of my last video on her. Videos by rising content creators Smokey McCrack, Horsemeat Estrogen, and Kami Digo related to Bella were all taken down as a result of privacy complaints. None of them should have been. Smokey and Horsemeat's videos were merely their own commentary, in passing, on information posted by others over footage of themselves playing video games. They didn't violate Bella's privacy whatsoever and hardly even mentioned more than her name. The removal of Kami's video was even more outlandish. Part 1 of her 3 hour interview with Zoe and Roman got taken down. Again, the video was completely permissible per YouTube TOS, which is why part 2 and 3 are still up. But Bella gets extremely energized when her real life victims are involved, so it's not surprising she had particular interest in suppressing their story. And on a funnier note, Bella's sock puppetry campaign never stopped, especially on my YouTube comments. She decided to up her efforts after my last video on her with some hysterical results. She left me countless YouTube comments under myriad handles, all recognizable from similar themes. Fake names created that day, logically fallacious appeals to sources that don't exist, and trying to contradict mountains of evidence by piling as many inane lies and misdirections as possible. My personal favorites were when she got frustrated and tried to get me to lose composure by claiming I was caught with kitty porn, projecting much, and invoking the name of my dear sister as a true author of Athena's self-relating blogspot post. Bella, respectfully, you're just not intelligent enough to run mind games. And the last draw theme of Bella's sock puppeting was pretending to be her mother, Athena, or pretending to be someone pretending to be your mother, I guess. And she even came back to Kiwi Farms to quintuple post in Athena's thread to that effect. But unfortunately for Bella, her incompetence always shines through in her idiosyncrasies no matter how great her efforts. 
I'm sure she'll be back though, so feel free to play Spot the Fungus in my comment sections. Next, let me proffer a little reassurance on my recent silence. Owing to Bella's obscenely rich parents and being female, I wasn't expecting much to come from this first committee. There was a backup plan though, and I have to give a massive shout out to Kiwi Farms user Greasy Spoon, who has collected a lot of first party Bella information by exploiting her stupidity and bad opsec. The Imgur account leaks I mentioned last video, which contained unshakable proof of Bella sexually assaulting classmates and possessing child pornography, were just the tip of the repository's iceberg, but I'm sure you understand why the matter required delicacy. Anyway, although I didn't highlight it, one such item you could have seen for yourself in that thread was evidence of Bella cheating on her exams. Long story short, Greasy Spoon had a lot more evidence to that effect waiting in the wings should TTU not take this matter seriously again. A lot of you asked for updates over the last few months, but the relative silence was necessary. Finally, let me end this video with a parting message to Isabella Janke herself. Bella, this is a first for you, isn't it? For 20 years, you've been coddled by three obscenely rich parents who provided you with every luxury you could imagine. Be it a mansion with an enclosed garden, a college admission you didn't deserve, or infinite free time to spend on the internet. You're one of the few people I know of in this world that was born with the opportunity to do anything with her life. You could have learned anything with your life. Instead, you chose to learn one thing, how to hurt others. And I might say you were pretty good at it. Your entire life, you've harnessed the privilege of being female, enjoying people's trust by default because of your gender. Your entire life, you harnessed human believability, using the ease of wholehearted denial to get away with outlandish crimes. Your entire life, you used an endless budget to buy small animals and torture mechanisms for them off the internet. And your entire life, you've never experienced the smallest of repercussions for any of your crimes. Until now. You're finally feeling what the rest of us have to live with every day. Consequences for your actions. It's scary, isn't it? I'm sure by now you've found some solace as you recline in Mike's mansion and Athena's penthouse for two years. But so too will all of us who oppose sadists find solace in knowing everything you love to do most is going to be just a little bit harder for you from now on. Finding those lonely classmates to isolate, manipulate, and abuse? That's going to be just a little bit harder with your on-campus infamy. Finding obese, idiotic content creators desperate for celebrity status to accuse other people of your crimes? That's going to be just a little bit harder with prevailing YouTube results of your name. Finding simpleton cronies like Lewis willing to die for you? Even that might be a little bit harder now that your bra stuffing is out of the bag. And every time you have that moment, every time you experience that realization that impunity is hampering your ability to hurt people just a little bit, I want you to remember this all. I want you to remember all the animals you tortured to death. I want you to remember all the mentally ill people you tried to kill. And I want you to remember that this is only the beginning. That's what you get. That's what you fucking get, bitch.